everyone, as promised, I'm back with my amazing specialist periodontist, Dr. Mittal Shah. There's, I think, two different aspects to cosmetic gums, as I call it. And correct me if I'm wrong, Mitz, don't worry. I am his boss, but he can be mean to me. <laughs> um, today's video is gonna be just about the recession and then we'll come back for part two gummy smell. And we'll talk about what causes these different problems, how we can treat them, and how we can also maintain them. Okay, so first of all, what is gum recession? Gum recession, in simple terms, means the gum has moved away from its position around the neck of the tooth, uh, exposing what we call the root surface, or the cementum. Your tooth has a crown, which is uh, demarcated by enamel. So enamel is the white part of the tooth. As you move beyond the enamel, the tooth begins to turn a bit yellow, a bit darker, and that's the root surface. So recession is any exposure of the root surface. What causes root recession? People can genetically have slightly thinner gums, thinner bone around the teeth, mm -hmm. and those people are more susceptible to gum recession in general. Predisposed through anatomy, so having thick or thin gums and bone, the position of the tooth within the jawbone, and then in terms of what causes it, it boils down to inflammation, so yeah. most commonly through uh, gum disease or trauma from tooth brushing or certain habits that the patient has. So we know what gum recession is and we know what causes gum recession. Key thing is, when do we need to do something about it? So when do we treat and when do we not treat? And then after that, it will come with what treatments are available. But first of all, when do we treat and when do we not treat? The two sort of factors that we take into consideration are health and aesthetics. If we don't treat this gum recession, could the tooth be negatively affected? Could you potentially lose the tooth? And there are extreme cases of gum recession, you know, where if we don't do something and this gets worse, the patient will end up losing teeth. Aesthetics, it really boils down to how much is visible. So some people, uh, when they smile, the lip actually covers most of the gums yeah. and they don't show a lot of tooth. So even if no there is- No lip line, guys. I don't show much gum or any gum when I'm smiling. I wish I was a bit gummy, I have to admit that. <laughs> but if you show gum on smiling, that's when you want to think about it. If the gums have receded, the proportions of the teeth will begin to be a bit off. The teeth will be too long, they'll look long in the tooth. Uh, and for those reasons, people yeah. will often seek me out to say, can you do something? From a health perspective though, what are the risks? I mean, some people have come to me before and said, oh my God, my, look at the recession here, my tooth's about to fall out. So when do you have to treat and when do you not have to treat? If apart from looking long in the tooth and having sensitivity possibly. You strongly advise treatment if uh, there are several factors that are going in favor of the recession getting worse. So this boils down to how thick is the gum tissue around the recession defect? Some people can have very, very thin gums yeah. and we know that thin gums are more susceptible to recession. So if you've got no thick gum at all around the tooth and the recession's quite bad, probably a good time to do something to prevent that from getting worse. Yeah. If the recession's really, yeah. really deep and you take an x-ray and you look and the tooth's lost a lot of bone around yeah. it and you're sort of thinking, well, if this recession reaches the end of the root, the tooth's gonna die, yeah. have to do something. So we know when to treat and when not to treat. Now, what are the options available for recession? What gets frustrating is people turn to Dr. Google rather than actually trusting a, a professional. Yeah. It boils down to two things. One is we need to consider are we going to reposition the gum back to where it used to yeah. be and if we are there's different techniques to yeah. do that. The second part is do we need to do a graft? So a graft is basically trying to transform the tissue. Yeah. If the gum is very thin can we do something to make it thicker and less prone to recession in the future. Technique wise, the most common procedure uh, that we do uh, if we're solely trying to thicken the gums is something called a free gingival graft. This is basically a transplant of some thick gum from the roof of the mouth to the area of recession, most commonly the lower mandible. We only really do this in areas that you don't see when you're smiling. So you're saying cutting some tissue from the palate, sticking it down there, is it number one painful and number two is it done under general anaesthetic, local anaesthetic sedation? I know the answers guys, I'm just you know, thinking in your terms. It is a surgery and there is some post-operative discomfort, but to be honest, if you take painkillers like paracetamol and ibuprofen, within three days, most people are fine. We typically do 95% of procedures under local anesthetic. For cases where maybe we're doing a bigger surgery, treating more teeth, or the patient's a bit anxious, it's very easy to arrange for intravenous sedation. So you're fully awake, you can still uh, talk, breathe, but you're just chilled out. And people, 
often ask, is it really painful on the palate? Do I have to have a soft diet? Is there going to be severe pain? Because obviously tissue's been cut from there. With an experienced surgeon, uh, the pain isn't too bad. One of the things we do is actually we make a retainer, a bit like an Invisalign retainer. Instead of just going around the teeth, it actually covers the palate, which means in the healing period, the first few weeks after surgery, you can eat, drink pretty much what you like without the palate getting sore. Perfect. So we've got option number one is a graft from the palate which is only available in certain circumstances. What is the other options? The other options are to use substitutes. Over the last 20 years, uh, as more and more gum surgery has been done, we've always tried to improve uh, our workflows and we all recognize that harvesting gum from the palate isn't desirable for yeah. most people. So there are a number of substitutes on the market. These are typically derived from animals, yeah. most commonly pigs, uh, but essentially they're replacing the soft tissue graft aspect, which means quicker surgery, pretty predictable results, happier patients post-operatively. Sometimes I treat people where I'm doing recession surgery on 10 to 12 teeth at yeah. a time. It would be kind of unfeasible to expect yeah. uh, the patient to have that much gum tissue harvested from the palate, so substitute is perfect. And if you're vegan, are there options? Unfortunately, as far as I'm aware, no, other than using your own tissue. <laughs> graft and substitute are the two options. Sometimes we don't actually need to graft, so if you have existing thick gums, and the recession defect we're trying to cover isn't actually that big, we can simply just move the existing gum without the need for a graft. And obviously you can monitor it if it isn't really bad and again, low lip line, also if you don't have any sensitivity. The reason why you have sensitivity is because when the gums do recede, they expose what we call the underlying dentine. The dentine is the more sensitive part of the tube. So when you have something like ice cream, for example, it triggers the nerve endings in that more sensitive part. So sometimes that could you know, push you to have treatment. When you come for a consultation, we've really talked through all of the options. For mild recession, where we're talking only about a millimeter, two millimeters, maybe some composite bonding to actually cover the recession, extending a veneer to cover the recession, you know, could be a valid option. Yeah. But we always take into consideration your smile, your face, uh, your belief will sort of give you all of the options um, based on what's right for you. Now, before we finish off, the one thing that I did want to ask you, it's a little bit off the topic of recession, but it's not a topic that warrants a whole video in itself, is when people have had root treated teeth and their teeth appear kind of purple or dark because of the root treatment. They've had beautiful ceramic work, but the gums still have that discoloration. When you have a dead tooth, which is what happens when there's a root canal, the inside of the tooth does turn dark. Sometimes a, a dentist or an endodontist will do internal whitening of the tooth yeah. to try and sort of brighten it up from the inside. And that combined with outside whitening, veneers, bonding, in most cases can, you know, cover up the dark appearance of the tooth. But if that darkness is really inside the tooth, if it's on the root surface, it's very, very difficult to actually brighten that up with whitening. One of the reasons it's so visible is actually yeah. the thickness of the gum. So if you have thin gum tissue, you're more likely to see that darkness. Yeah. Although there may not actually be recession, doing a soft tissue graft to thicken the gum can mask that appearance. So let's have a little summary. Recession is where the gum has moved away from the tooth, exposing the root surface. There's many techniques to treat it, you, which includes do having nothing done, also having a graft from the palate or a substitute. I would always go to a gum specialist. I feel that it's quite complex treatment. That's my own opinion. There are treatments available to cover dark roots if you have thin tissue there by having a graft as well. If you need any more information, please contact me or Mittal. And yep. that's it. We're signing off and we'll see you later with the gummy smiles.